Now, how can a person calculate how high an ollie will be just by knowing the force used to push the board? This can be determined knowing what we know with mechanical advantage, leverage, and something called torque, which is very similar to the two, except torque is basically the tendency of a force to rotate an object around an axis or a fulcrum. And in this case, the fulcrum of the skateboard is the wheel. Now we can calculate the height of an ollie just by starting with this rudimentary diagram of basic shape of a skateboard looks like, and the knowns. Which is, the main known is that the force applied to the tail is 75 newtons. Here's another image that may help better elaborate what the diagram will explain. Where the force is applied to the tail, and then the other force from the other end of the board is mg, which is the mass of the wheel in the truck, which is at the bottom of the board, which is also pulling down on the opposite side of the lever, or the skateboard. You can start out by drawing just this lever, which explains that there's 75 newtons pushed on on one side, and there are 5 newtons pushed down on the other side. And we can calculate the F net, or the, for the net force, on the lever by subtracting the two, which is because they are opposites, because they are going opposite directions, which that F net is 70 newtons. And this can be then shown again on a different diagram of a lever with this. We can then calculate what this could also mean. It's not just that it's pushing down, but because there's mechanical advantage, it's also pushing up on the other side. We can calculate this with the e equation in the last clip, or not the last clip, but prior clip, where F1 times D1 is equal to F2 times D2. And we can solve for the second force, which is pushing the board up. With that force, we can also we can start to calculate work. And to determine the work required, we need to know the distance. And because this is an arc, because the board rotates on a, on a single fulcrum, is rotating and creating an arc as it spins, as shown in this image. We can then solve for distance using this equation, s equals theta r, where s, the arc length, is equal to theta r, and r is the radius, and theta is 45 degrees, or in radians, which their equation requires, is pi over 4 radians. So then s is equal to d. w is equal to force times theta r. And we can then determine this. The amount of work required. With work, you can then determine velocity using a kinetic energy equation. Since this calculated velocity is the result of the board moving in an arc, it's not the velocity required. To get this velocity, we use the angle, which is 45 degrees as shown in this picture, to find the velocity in the y direction to determine the total height. Once calculated that velocity in the y direction, you can just use the conservation of energy theorem to determine the height. Hope that wasn't too boring, but be on the lookout for my next video. Plasma hoverboards, are they real?